Hi guys, I'm Nate from Recapped Now. Today, I'm going to recap a 2000 comedy romance and fantasy movie called 100 Girls. This sexy teen comedy movie is about a freshman, Matthew, at college who meets his dream girl in a dorm elevator during a blackout. He never sees her face, but instantly fall in love. Next day she vanished, and only her panties left. How the Matthew will find her now. One night, Matthew, a college student, went to a party in a female's dormitory and hit the elevator button for a girl carrying her laundry. The power went out unexpectedly, but Matthew continued to have a nice talk with the girl and eventually made love to her. Unfortunately, Matthew did not see her face, and the girl had already left in the morning. As a result, Matthew becomes desperate to find the mysterious female. However, Matthew receives little support from his friend Rod, who cannot understand why he is so keen to find the girl in the elevator. Matthew admits that he has never had such luck with a lady before, and he recalls other occasions when he embarrassed himself in front of a girl. Despite this, Rod pays little attention to what he says and instead rambles on about how he can lengthen his masculinity. Then Rod's mood shifts abruptly when Matthew shows him the underwear the girl left in the elevator, shamelessly taking it from his pal and smelling it. So Matthew snatches it back and begins doing his homework, ignoring Rod while watching television. Moments later, Matthew discusses with Rod how he will enter the women's dormitory. He then tosses a bag of mice through the dormitory's window while pretending to be a maintenance man. Once inside the building, Matthew begins searching for the matching undergarment to the underwear he discovered. Unfortunately, Matthew does not discover what he is seeking for and simply chooses to call it a day. However, Matthew notices Crick giving his girlfriend, Patty, a hard time, so he intervenes and urges the huge guy to stop. Matthew is afraid that Crick will beat him up, yet he continues to taunt him and call him names. At the same time, Matthew continues thinking that he'd rather have Crick go Mike Tyson on him than see Patty injured. To help Patty, Matthew reaches out and pinches Crick's chest. The guy can only scream in anguish, but he manages to do the same with Matthew. The two stand there and continue to hurt one other, until Matthew finally gives up. So Crick informs Matthew that he will return for him, and tells Patty that he will deal with her later. Patty gives Matthew some mydle after Crick leaves. Patty then pulls Matthew's shirt, and notices that he is heavily bruised, so she uses the cool can of beer to prevent the bruises from worsening. Following that, Matthew makes it apparent that he recognizes Patty and admires her beauty. Meanwhile, Patty tries to make out with Matthew, but he becomes uncomfortable and withdraws. Patty, perplexed, asserts that Matthew is most likely concerned about what others think of her. Matthew, on the other hand, tells her that this is not the case and even expresses his willingness to try. He then takes the little balls on the nightstand and plays with them, assuming they are used to relieve tension. Unfortunately, Matthew is mortified when Patty informs him what the balls are for and quickly departs. Following that, Matthew informs Rod that he will continue to pretend to be a maintenance man until he finds his mystery girl. Then Matthew says he intends to cause a nuisance every day between lectures and homework, and the women in the dormitory will have no choice but to let him in. However, Matthew occasionally meets difficulties, particularly if the girl who requires his assistance is scary. Matthew once went to the ladies' dormitory to assist a gorgeous girl named Cynthia with a restroom problem. Unfortunately, Matthew continues to stutter, but Cynthia tries to overlook it. Then he helps mend the girl's television, and Arlene invites him to play foosball. The loser of each goal must remove one item of clothing, and Matthew, of course, ends up taking off the majority of his clothes. Matthew eventually loses, and the females assist him remove his shorts. Fortunately, Matthew's virility impresses everyone, and he walks confidently out of there. Following his game with Arlene, Matthew informs Rod that he lost a game to a girl. Then they start discussing about female body parts, questioning why God gave women all the tools for seduction. Rod, on the other hand, dislikes discussing it and eventually tells Matthew to stop since he is stressing him out. The following day, Matthew tampers with the air conditioning equipment in the women's dormitory. This time, the females are compelled to take off their clothes since it is too hot. Of course, Rod and Matthew are watching everything from their room, 
and Matthew claims he still has no idea who his mystery girl is. At the same time, Matthew informs his companion that all of the girls in the dormitory have individual characteristics before naming them one by one. One Saturday morning, Matthew becomes irresponsible. He uses one of the young lady's bathrooms in the dormitory to wash his hands before hiding in the bathtub when she returns. Unfortunately, Matthew left the toilet seat up and the girl immediately recognizes that someone has been there. She then scrubs the sink while Matthew quietly lowers the toilet seat, but it isn't long before she applies hairspray to Matthew's face. The female quickly recognizes Matthew and introduces herself as Wendy, explaining that they were formerly classmates. Wendy then administers to Matthew's hurting eyes, and he tells her about his search for his mysterious girl. So Wendy volunteers to assist Matthew by acting as his lookout whenever he wants to enter a girl's room. Finally, Matthew finds a match and waits for the girl of his dreams. Of course, when the girl arrives, Matthew immediately professes his feelings for her, only to be disappointed when she communicates using sign language. As it turns out, the girl is unable to communicate, therefore she cannot be the person Matthew is looking for. Matthew is unable to stop sulking as a result of what transpired. On the other side, Rod reminds him that ladies only cause difficulty. Then, Rod discusses why guys shouldn't waste their time on girls, leaving Matthew wondering what happened to his friend to make him detest women. Rod then questions Matthew about his ad, to which Matthew responds that he's running out of options for finding the mystery girl faster. According to the advertisement, Matthew will wait for the girl in the dormitory basement every Thursday night, but Rod merely makes fun of him. Unfortunately, Matthew has spent numerous Thursdays in the dark, and the girl has yet to appear. Wendy enters the basement a few minutes later and offers Matthew some food, determined to cheer him up. However, as Wendy cooks their meal, Matthew worries what kind of wife the girl would become in the future. Then they eat together, and Wendy tells a sad story about her father. After dinner, Wendy disguises Matthew as a girl. She instructs him to pretend to be Francesca, whose purpose is to get one of the females in the dormitory to admit that she had a steamy session in the elevator during a blackout. Unfortunately, neither of the girls admits to doing so in the elevator, thus Wendy and Matthew's scheme fails. So Wendy tells Matthew to get to know the young females, hoping he will get a sense of which one they are. Matthew, out of alternatives, begins talking to all of the girls in an attempt to figure out who his mystery girl is. Unfortunately, Matthew struggles to communicate with Cynthia, so he addresses her as Francesca instead and realizes there is more to her than meets the eye. Then, that night, Matthew speaks with a quiet girl named Dora, who believes Matthew is just chatting to her because he pities her. The next day, Arlene challenges Matthew to another round of foosball. While playing, the two of them discuss the difficulties of being a man and a woman, and Arlene ultimately loses. Arlene, enraged, confronts Matthew and accuses him of cheating, but Matthew counters that no rules were established. Arlene leaves, but she does not hide her dislike for Matthew. During his women's studies lecture, Matthew discusses how men and women believe they are playing fairly but are being cheated, claiming there are no clear rules between them. His teacher, Ms. Stern, disagrees, claiming that women are aware of the constraints imposed and enforced by Western civilization's present patriarchal system. Unfortunately, Matthew has nothing further to say about this. After their midterms, Matthew checks on the girl who hasn't left her room. Then he discovers Dora isn't in her customary location and searches for her, only to find her on the rooftop. Worried, Matthew rushes to the rooftop and collides with two men carrying a couch on the steps, causing them to drop it and accidentally strike Cynthia. On the rooftop, Matthew persuades Dora not to jump, but she refuses because she is both unattractive and intelligent. Dora, on the other hand, claims she knows what awaits her and that no one would ever be passionate about her. Dora then acknowledges that she doesn't intend to leap, and Matthew eventually persuades her to return inside. Dora and Matthew then read a book together, and Matthew discovers that he is enjoying himself. One night, Matthew tells Wendy about the downsides of being Francesca. He claims Rod didn't recognize him, and the man began gazing at his dress. Of course, Matthew was aware of Rod's actions because he also engages in them. Then, 
Matthew reveals to Wendy that he feels violated, and Wendy says she understands. At the same time, Matthew cannot believe Rod was willing to do it with him when he teased him while dressed as Francesca. After telling the anecdote, Matthew recognizes that women bear greater responsibility than males. He also claims that women truly govern the world, but the irony is that they are not assigned to visible roles. Matthew points out that men are terrified of putting women in the job because they believe that women will eventually climb to their proper positions of leadership. Days later, Matthew sits down with Patty and shares a bowl of cereal with her. Then, Patty says she knows Matthew likes someone, and she can tell by the way he looks at her. Unfortunately, Crick soon appears, so Matthew devises a strategy to divert him and keep him away from Patty. The big guy then loses his cool and pushes Matthew away, prompting Patty to intervene. With no other option, Matthew assists Patty in taking down Crick before stapling his hair to the floor and leaving. As a result, Crick is obliged to chop his hair before embarking on his search for Patty. However, Patty drops her tiny ball, and it isn't long until Crick discovers them and pursues them. However, in an unexpected twist, Patty's second ball slips, causing Crick to slip and fall down the stairs. Then Matthew sleeps with Patty, and they make a mess after Patty accidentally knocks over a little bottle of paint. In the morning, Matthew feels bad about using Patty. He's concerned that his mystery girl will find out what he did, but Rod assures him not to worry. Once again, Rod begins discussing how they should treat girls, prompting Matthew to question why he despises women so much. However, Rod refuses to address the question and instead shifts the subject. He claims he slept with a lady named Francesca the other day, so Matthew becomes enraged since he knows his pal is lying and places a heavy object on Rod's manhood stretcher. After a few weeks, Matthew still doesn't know who the girl in the elevator is. Then, unexpectedly, the girl appears in the basement and instructs Matthew to stop hunting for her, claiming she dislikes him. Unfortunately, Matthew cannot see her face again because it is dark, so he follows her when she leaves. Of course, Matthew loses her again, and he has no choice except to go see Wendy and Mope. Matthew, upset, informs Wendy that his mystery female most likely has a partner or was intoxicated in the elevator. Matthew also claims that his mother raised him with low self-esteem, which causes Wendy to rage since she believes that parents constantly strive to shape their children into someone they do not want to be. Wendy then breaks her framed image with her mother, and they end up having a pillow fight. Wendy's mother discovers her sleeping with Matthew on a pile of feathers the following morning. Matthew is still looking for his mystery girl, but he feels rushed because the school year is coming to an end. He subsequently makes peace with Arlene and pairs up with her in foosball, defeating Crick and his friend. Matthew then prepares a movie of Dora to show her how wonderful she is. Then he destroys the lady's dormitory window so he can pretend to be a maintenance worker again and repair it. Unfortunately, before he can do so, he discovers Cynthia's wounded face as a result of the couch falling on her. Feeling terrible, Matthew spends time with Cynthia and discusses the book she is reading. Cynthia, on the other hand, becomes enraged and kicks the wall, causing a hole to appear. On another occasion, Matthew spends out with Patty as Francesca, since he is unsure what to say to her as himself. He then asks Patty if she likes the maintenance guy, and she says no. At the same moment, they are interrupted by Crick, who refuses to leave Patty alone. So Matthew intervenes, allowing Patty to leave, but Crick refuses to stop and instead turns his attention on Matthew. Crick, mistaking Matthew for a lady, attempts to kiss him, causing Matthew to bite off his tongue. Matthew is ashamed and refuses to tell anyone what happened. Then he discovers Rod having a nice time while watching Dora's film, but he is astonished to see his friend's manhood. With no other option, Rod describes his illness and reveals that he was previously embarrassed in front of a female as a result of it, requesting that Matthew keep it a secret. At that point, Matthew understood why Rod resents women. However, he does not mock his friend and instead tries to cheer him up. As his time runs out, Matthew goes to the ladies' dormitory and tells 100 girls that he's seeking for a mysterious lady he met in the elevator. He then reveals everything and pours out his heart, 
and all of the girls claim to be the ones Matthew is looking for. However, Matthew realizes that her mystery female is the one who hasn't left her room, so he hurries to open her door. Unfortunately, the young lady states she is not Matthew's girl, but she does mention that the girl may be a few doors down. Without further ado, Matthew knocks on Patty's door and informs her that he has discovered her identity. But Patty rejects him, claiming he fell in love with another girl in the elevator. Patty also claims that she tried to make Matthew fall in love with her, but he is infatuated over the other female. Sadly, Matthew is forced to depart despite his strong desire to be with Patty. Matthew eventually comes to understand that he cannot be with Patty. Meanwhile, the sisters go about their lives, and Cynthia realizes she is skilled at martial arts. Then, Matthew musters the strength to speak up in Ms. Stern's class, stating that the problem is that there are too many factions in the world fighting one other rather than attempting to understand one another. As a result, Matthew's students cheer him, and the teacher remains silent. On the other side, Crick's tongue has caused him to be unable to talk correctly. Then, Matthew threatens to call the cops on Crick for what he did to him while dressed as Francesca, and it doesn't take long for the guy's other victims to come forward. Wendy later discloses to Matthew that she likes girls, and Arlene becomes her girlfriend. At the same moment, Matthew arranges for Rod and Dora to become locked in the elevator, and they have been together ever since. After that, Matthew decides to pay Patty a visit and treats her as if she were a long-awaited present. Then they kiss, and Matthew is relieved that he has finally found the girl of his dreams. Please do hit that like button if you enjoyed the recap. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell for more movie recaps. Stay tuned for our next cinematic adventure, and until then, happy watching.